the nature of our reality as seen through the eyes of Grega Atero. It is 1.29 Saturday, April the 20th, the year 2013. It's my day. I'm going to share this morning with you in the traditional fashion that Sheridan and share my insights that uh, have been bouncing around in my reality most recently the this this present moment and, and leading up to it this whole past week has been exciting for a lot of people um, I, uh, I lived in Boston a couple of years ago for a summer and uh, I grew up in Portland Maine and so uh, there's a story at play I've said this many times before there is a story at play and how do you choose to play in that story my own voice to myself sounds different, so I wonder how it sounds different to you because uh, the allergies I've been experiencing and I know how to work with them appropriately. I haven't been working with them appropriately enough. But I have this lovely book, Douglas Adams, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I'm going to use as a rolling table. And well, it's interesting how pot's been uh, changing in America, and I, I see how it's been, there's been such a huge level of abuse brought to it, uh, especially in my home state of Maine, and now being here in Oregon, uh, the very pro-pot states and, and the, the medical use, and there's heavy use of abuse with it, and there's also intent of use, and really understanding how a drug can be used appropriately is this emerging thing in our society, it's become very taboo. I don't talk about it much, and I, I'm definitely a, a fan of Daniel Pinchbeck's work. But you can say go galliantropine, is that a word? Maybe it is. About it. And uh, how it does create sometimes a haze, but it can also connect dots and stimulate creativity. And uh, in terms of how things have been manifesting in my life, and uh, questioning uh, the free will of love has been a, a major thing going on and uh, uh, tonight is a night of solitude there hasn't been a night of solitude for a while it allows for a great deal of reflection it does in front of a video camera something I've done before in the past and where it's it just happens to be um, magical 420 and uh, one thing I have, I've enjoyed in terms of uh, cannabis use is actually just solitude and engaging in creative endeavors. I haven't been really exploring creative endeavors. I've been rather serious lately, very serious, and really into my character. There's a dynamic world I'm playing in lately and I'm really enjoying it thoroughly. It's, it's, it's a blast. But uh, of all my practices, uh, the spiritual practices, one that's most significant to me is, is, is mindfulness. And you can meditate all you want, but we're in this reality for a reason. And being mindful in this reality, and uh, there's plenty of points in my life of, of soberness and going into points of, of use of substances. And uh, mindfulness is really important. And so uh, for the past year, I haven't really drank any alcohol. It's been very rare. And, since I've been here in Ashland, I've been drinking a little bit more beer, but what I mean by beer is like having one or two beers uh, several times a week versus I'd have like one alcoholic drink maybe a month. Uh, and so going up to, but so today I had a stout. Um, I went to Standing Stone and it's in Ashland. And what's awesome about this brewery, uh, it's a brewery restaurant, is well, Ashland doesn't fluoride as water, so it's actually fluoride-free beer. And that just gives me some, like an amazing sense of appreciation to be able to drink fluoride-free beer. You know how much beer in America is fluoridated? Really, just think about that for a second. And uh, have this beautiful stout in my hand, and I mean, I ain't give a rat's ass about the alcohol. Just the flavor alone, just that bold darkness appreciation and my my friend keeps reminding me every time you know I take a sip of water to say thank you and I, it's, it's a practice I'm really coming into but I, I have mastered it with beer and that every time I have this beautiful gift of the gods in my hand and I, and I mean it's it's usually very good beer 
absolute sheer appreciation, pure appreciation. It's a, it's a beautiful thing uh, in terms of crafting taste. Um, uh, good friend here makes mead, and mead is a wonderful appreciation I have for. It. It's it's a thoroughly enjoyable thing, and but they're just being mindful of when that honey wine hits your lips and how it tastes and maybe there's some blackberry and how it sizzles to life just the moment it, it makes the moment it makes what being human human and there's different things we can say about reality and what we're here and this idea of moving to a really healthy lifestyle and yes I want to be you know live a fluoride free life but also knowing how the mind is so much more powerful than matter and, and what matter is and that this is just all matter around us with us experiencing in some unique way and well one of the the mindful things I've taken on in that um, since I've been actually I've also been smoking a little bit more and that I, I don't own a, a piece anymore there's uh, it, to me it, it encourages a nasty habit of, of just wanting to get high and uh, I really like the physical process of drinking a beer I really love the physical process of smoking a joint the actual partaking of the moment in that uh, there's such different levels of, of life in that growing up in high school and, and driving around in the back roads of Maine and the conversations and the experiences I got into that revolved around the process of partaking in that experience and what that brought for experience into my life was unique, it was stimulating, it, it activated my consciousness but it's also becoming aware of how it activates your consciousness and that's just a vibration and everything's just a vibration and you don't need it to, to engage that vibration and it's a tool to help you maybe see and experience that vibration that you haven't been able to experience for the first time because what's happening in reality, I almost feel like tonight's the night where I'm just sort of like, the world is fucking getting crazy. It's getting really crazy. And uh, internally mine is too in terms of some of the emotional interconnections and pathways and patterns that are manifesting before me and just seeing the fluidity of all the characters in my life moving around me right now and that there's nothing random about it and you're starting to see the karmic uh, substance before your eyes in great detail and depth and what's really going on with this planet right now it's just like <sighs> and so uh, I've, I've not I, I don't want to get a glass piece I didn't have one when I came here I, I don't usually travel well, usually when I'm traveling I'm not really smoking or drinking much at all. I'm usually very happy being sober traveling. So when I got to Ashland and sort of like set roots here, I, I never got a piece of it. I don't have an it and I'm not gonna get one. Don't, don't want don't want one. And that there's just like cooking, you like harvest the food, you prep the food, you make the food, you eat the food, you enjoy the food. And then like the most important thing that we seem to forget about is like the process of the whole meal is like the doing the dishes is part of the decay and to truly enjoy eating dinner, eating a meal, you gotta also enjoy the dishes. You gotta enjoy the whole process of like partaking in the meal. And so, to, to me there, there is a process of like, how do you manifest the green in your life? Uh, and, and do you grow it? Uh, do, you, do you provide for yourself? Um, do you participate um, somehow in the legal system and get a card? And there's, there's all these different ways that the process comes to and the most enjoyable part I have is is pre preparing a cigarette and, and actually making it how it should be made and uh, it's really my admiration comes from is from Europeans and how Europeans go about smoking differently than Americans and Americans there's a lot more pipes well Europeans I, I've are they just roll these beautiful, beautiful cones. It's just this vortex geometry that opens up and like the paper is like seamless. It's like perfect. That's art. And it's in the it's an art that engages a process. And so seeing this is, is something that's wonderful to experience. And it, it's I've 
been, you know, jumping around the metaphysical community and spiritual community, new age, however you want to phrase it. Um, I, I overall, with, without terms, I, I really like the phrase just conscious. The the conscious communities. Ashland is a very conscious community. I'm very grateful to be here. Um, Asheville is too. I love the ashes, really do. Uh, if you didn't know. Uh, Ashes is an extremely dense wood, and it's considered the best for magical stas because the um, Earth's energy travels through it uh, wonderfully, or so I'm told. And uh, anyways, uh, with these conscious communities, uh, I feel like I'm among a bunch of uh, high elves, and I'm really a wood elf by nature. I'm I'm so wood elf. I've been told I'm a wood elf so many times. Um, you can say an archetype. That's just the way I play. Even when I did. Uh, Warhammer uh, back in like high school it, it, it was more middle school actually uh, I, Wood Elves, definitely played the Wood Elves video games, Wood Elves always and, uh, hell I was talking about bows and arrows today uh, even bought stuff uh, with uh, someone from work we're making wooden pad stabs, uh, I can't remember the name but uh, I used to fence and I used to do archery um, and uh, it's really really fun to do sword play it's excellent it's uh, it's fun to play a knight, you could say, uh, in terms of archetypes. And well, here we are in the now, and it's it's ever so wild. There's there's a lot of people in fear right now, and I I feel good to feel disconnected from the story of why I called today Earth 1.0, and that like definitely not playing the game of Earth 1.0. It's just not affecting me um, in that way. And uh, definitely playing Earth 2.0. And so maybe this is what we're talking about with like realities just just separating. I mean, they're still here, but I mean, there is like a, a, a separation going on and you're getting equal and opposite reactions and the farther you're, you're going away from this mainstream now, the more you're gonna get pulled back and whipped back. <coughs> so the more, extreme I can go to um, the more I'm gonna pull people toward and there's just like a lot of stretching going on right now and uh, especially with consciousness and perceiving and the emotional experiences are extravagant right now as of lately and there's just huge levels of, of processing undergoing and well Let's 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 change up the story. Oh, I don't have any of them with me. I don't have a single star coil in this room with me. I'm not even wearing mine, as uh, a love of mine has one. And uh, yeah, the star coils have just they've been sold, they've been given away, and well, they're coming back. They're coming back strong. Uh, there's they're. Uh, Building a uh, manually tw manual twisted machine at the moment. I actually went to the metal yard today uh, to get uh, the main like I beam to build the twisting machine on, and uh, discovered next to the mail yard, which I've been to before, that there's like a used mail yard and you can, like you know bins of copper, 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 and more copper. I love copper and just seeing like a big giant used bin of copper. That was like my boyhood moment of the day. I was like, oh, there's like used copper and Medford, yes, ooh, so much cheaper, so much unbelievably cheaper than buying it in stores, and it's like a garage sale of like swimming through copper, it's just this bright orange, and orange is like my secret hand happy color, and so uh, very happy to find all this copper today. Delayed me from going to the other place which closed um, to, to build the twisting machine, but that was like my plan this weekend, so plan is now uh, this, and uh, the other thing is the 3D printing, and uh, I, they now offer 3D printing in bronze and the cheaper uh, non-laser, but the oven sintering method, uh, which I can't find the actual term for. They're, they have all these terms for 3D printing, and then there's the cheap method, which involves uh, fusing it with plastic and then putting it in an oven, and then that melts the plastic off, um, leaving the metal particles that the plastic's encased in, um, and fuses the model. Uh, it's cheaper uh, than the laser just using a laser and shooting in the sand and drawing out with the laser. That, pro that process is more accurate. That's DSLM. 
uh, and uh, it's a laser centering process. But the other one I cannot find the process, and so like trying to find like uh, what's it called, like a a a industrial supplier and sending quotes out. And so I've been dealing with lots of quotes. Um, I was done with quotes before on it, and, and trying to find someone who can do what I really want. Uh, um, but uh, what I'm probably gonna get 3D printed is gold-plated bronze. Uh, so it's a 90% copper, 10% tin, pure bronze alloy, which is awesome. It's gonna ring great acoustically, and so, and it's still pretty conductive. And then you can gold-plate it or nickel-plate it which is ferromagnetic, and so just these openings of ideas with coils is going to be really great, but nothing will compare to the actual twisting. And the maker, aka me at the moment, but hopefully there will be more makers of coils in the future. Um, there will be, absolutely. And so, but when you actually twist it, and the alchemical process of twisting and trapping the energy in there, and so the, the big star coil, which is it's up in the other house here on the property, um, uh, that was twisted on a full moon, and so like, and like that whole evening, and that was a ridiculous evening, and everything that went into that coil that evening, um, and and the, the ceremony that was carried out with was like an experience, it was like imprinted in that, um, in a really powerful way, and so, uh, I need a filter. Hold on one second. So I think I'm going to get onto like story B and uh, what exactly happened uh, a couple nights ago. And so I had uh, an experience that was uh, very unique, extremely unique uh, of experiences that I've had in my life. And so it just came to a situation where there were seven of us sitting around a fire and it was just one of the first beautiful nights of Ashland like really coming in this mid-spring um, really warm out we're sitting around a fire it's like the first fire of spring that like sitting outside with friends and uh, what happened uh, or someone brought up the notion of or brought out some DMT and we all partook in it and uh, it's not the first time, I haven't done it much, but um, of all substance use of that sort, it's the thing that's most intriguing, because it's the only thing that's really produced in you. <laughs> it is, it's, it's part of you. Supposedly Buddhist monks have a thousand times more than human, or the average human, and they're operating at a much higher level. And uh, this is really where I'm coming to talk to all of us, is really understanding the nature of vibration, and how vibration is at the whole of all creation and it's reality and you can choose what you can do with it you can play uh, Earth 1.0 and be like man this kid is such a pothead or you can play Earth 2.0 and start creating your own story start discovering your own story start making your own reality damn <laughs> it's really fun when it starts manifesting the way you want it to manifest so thank you universe thank you so much um, I mean help I saw that one of the coolest manifestations in like real time this week and that my friend last week was like, ah, I really wished they had like gold bics at the top because you know, not everyone likes silver and I don't like silver. I really wish my bic had gold at the top. And then like two days ago, it was actually at, she came to the fire and she was like, you won't look, Gregor, look. And she holds up a bic lighter that's gold plated and they came out with this week, the anniversary edition of bic lighters. Um, and they're gold plated. <laughs> um, and so it was, things are humorous in, in many ways, but things are also like heavy on the heart and a lot of compassion right now and um, getting my shit torn up internally. Shadows just like ripping out in like enormous amounts. Just spilling out in every direction. If I don't want to confront it, the whole universe is like, well, then I'm going to confront it again, 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 really fast right now because you just didn't confront it here. And like, really in your face, making you work through the, these uh, internal struggles. And so, Douglas Adams, back over here. And, uh, <sighs> anyways, 
what happened in this is I had my necklace a few days ago on with a copper octogram and uh, it um, and I took it off my off my neck I really just wanted to experience the octogram while on DMT and it was one of the coolest things in my entire life I will say that hands down and uh, I've I've, I've I haven't think I really got in depth about my own personal experiences with the Taurus, completely sober, under the influence of other things, and um, and how I've intuitively come to these understandings of what it is I'm working with here, um, this geometry, and uh, it wasn't until uh, I had greater sensory expansion to really perceive its nature and what it does interdimensionally. And sometimes it's just, it's just so simple, but it's huge. Well, I, I have always had uh, an interesting experience using pendulums. And I'm not sure how many people are familiar with pendulums, but people use them for dowsing and for asking questions. And, I have one, I've used it for a little dowsing lately, but I haven't really used it much. Um, I'm really cautious with the pendulum. I, I, I feel like you want to use it when you really need to ask a question. Um, uh, it's not something to play with. But I, I do enjoy it in terms of like practicing psychokinesis and just feeling the subtle vibrations move through the pendulum. And I feel like when the pendulum's swinging back and forth, you can feel it in your head. And when there's and when it's rocking a specific way, you can get a motion swinging dynamically. But there's times where you're trying to move that motion, and you're sort of working against a force, and you can you can tune into it. It's a tactile sensation, and that that's the closest in terms of language, but really understanding a out of the body tactile sensation and how you can connect to that tactile sensation, and it's it's very qualitative, and so. That's the thing with, with the, the masculine scientific method is how do we measure something like that? And then there's the, the, the qualitative feminine experience. And that's something I've experienced. And it's, 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 it has it's sensory information. It's tactile. Um, and I can keep feeding more information from it. And it's not random. It's, there's cohesiveness to that, that sensory information coming to me and how I actually use it. And so... With the DMT, uh, it, it wasn't the strongest experience. I was very in my body, present. But in terms of what turned on with, with my brain, what turned on with my awareness and consciousness that interacted with my brain and how it expanded, and uh, the awareness, the tactile awareness of the environment around me was profound most specifically with the torus in my hand. And the torus had a distinct shaft of energy moving through it. And wherever I aimed or swung the torus, I could feel tactily, tactile, this, this shaft. I could feel it move through the air. But what I mean is I, I felt the top, I felt the mill, I felt, I felt the whole line. I was aware and could feel all the motion of that whole line moving through the space. It was a three-dimensional, holographic, tactile sensation. Um, I had full control of it, um, or, or, or full awareness of it, and control because I was moving it with my hand. Uh, and so... Um, What happened next is I started I started aiming it at me, um, and and just feeling its effect then directly on my body, which is something I could already do. In that uh, when I'm completely sober, and I tell people like I can I can just aim the torus at my body, and I'm very aware of of it hitting my skin and feeling it hit my skin, but I don't feel the shaft through it. This I could feel the shaft. I could feel the actual wave front. Um, hitting my face and before I could just feel it hitting my face so I was aware of this information um, here as well and it was it was holographic and I could um, and it was greatly assisted with my eyes closed 
Um, anyways, uh, when, when I shot it on my third eye, I remember just like feeling myself like explode up with energy and it like flew through my head back and like eyes like went right open like whoa and like it really just sort of like knocked me back into reality um and uh with like opening my eyes in that moment and here i'm gonna take a mindful moment this mindful moment at 154 a.m on my weekend my lovely weekend to do whatever i so choose because that is the power of free will in Earth 2.0. Um, and I'm gonna roll this nice cone, tucking in my filter. I can get, this is always the trickiest part. And it's like, it's all about like one smooth hand movement. Being really present in the moment. And so I'm gonna be so present, I'm gonna like disconnect from this video for six seconds So, I did like two of these earlier, because I've been practicing this technique, and they are beautiful. And I think in this moment, um, I wasn't really present. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of like in this video, in this world, and uh, presentness is sort of the key to all of this, and where we find our presence. And when we find our presence, that's where the music happens. That's where everything comes alive. And it just flows into wonderful existence. I don't know how else to say it. There we go. It's still not conical and perfect, but it's perfect for the now. It's perfect for this moment to share it with you. And so, this is, this is where the DMT experience takes a step up. And it was me starting to see the interrelationships of how the Taurus works. And I'm not saying I didn't understand how it worked before, because I haven't shared everything. There's, there's so much. There's just, there's just so much. It's, it, there's such a crazy cyclical process because it's, it's a cyclical geometry, and it's full of cyclical processes and getting to the material science. It's just all over the place in terms of the dynamics of how such a thing works. There's, I can... There's so much. There's so much. Someone did a video. I did a presentation here in Ashland recently with like eight people. And someone did a really good video of me breaking down vortex math in like a half an hour and going from complete abstraction to uh, toroidal application um, and, and, and showing how I go from A to B coherently. Uh, that should be going up on YouTube on someone else's channel sometime soon. And so you'll get more of a gist of what I'm talking about. But I'm going I'm to stay with the flow of 420 and bless this office to everyone in Boston my blessings go out there and, uh, and blessings for a beautiful now and so bringing intent and awareness into all that we do is how we see the nature of vibration into our reality. And so, what I learned on this experience is that sometimes you can roll better. That is what I'm learning in this moment. There we go. So the Taurus. The magical Taurus. I'm just staring the Taurus. I mean, uh, <laughs> we've uh, 
the part of the crew I work with uh, did a lot of tutorial studies with bongs. Um, uh, we don't have to do smoking anymore for that work, but uh, it's 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 definitely a way to work on one really cool thing you can do with smoke rings. You want to study physics? So it's all about creating an implosion in your mouth, understanding how the implosion gives birth to a torus. Take a laser. Right? You can have all the smoke come out, and it gives a reflective surface to light. And so if you take a laser and just move it really fast back and forth, it'll give you a perfect slice of the smoke. And if you have a torus, you can see the spiraling nature of the cutaway of the rings. And it's just great firsthand just to sit there and just, just see the fluid nature of nature. And so um, what I experienced with that torus on the DMT trip is the very nature of DMT itself. So like mushrooms, acid, psychedelics, of all variety, they all contain a vibration. And to me, most psychedelics are, are a distortion. And it's not necessarily a bad distortion, but a distortion of a higher consciousness. DMT to me is the closest of those to pure clarity. And so, because it's, it's produced in your body for a reason, all the others mimic serotonin and, and, and other substances that are naturally created in your brain. Except for MDMA, which happens to be a drug from a sassafras tree, in that uh, it releases serotonin in massive amounts in your brain. Otherwise, mostly everything else I know of psychedelics mimic actual brain molecules. So, I experienced the what the vibration which DMT allowed me to thus observe and participate in. And so, as I was aware consciously before, but more intuitively, well this, it was intuitive, it was actual, I was fully conscious of it, of how I could see the vibration in the Taurus. And so, I was aware of this higher consciousness in that moment and you could see it in the Taurus and so there was a video done on YouTube uh, I think it was Akta we talked about something happening around the solstice which didn't happen in which he described or maybe it did who knows um, actually what's really interesting I don't think I shared this on, on YouTube is the morning of the solstice, like right while the alignment was happening, I was on a bus to El Paso, and I was almost there. It was probably like four in the morning or something, three in the morning. I woke up on this bus, or so I, so I thought I did. I was dreaming, and I can't fully remember what happened in that dream, but it was me living I honestly feel what Octa said in that prophecy in terms of those seven minutes. I felt like I came out of those seven minutes and I woke up in a dream coming out of those seven minutes. And then I woke up on the bus. And so I was really confused. I was really confused <laughs> in those layers of, of how that I woke up after the solstice. And so I question, I do. And he said how this higher consciousness could be stored within the Taurus. And so I seeded the vibration within the Taurus um, in this toroidal form, and it just stayed flowing around it. And so as the, we came out of the experience, those remained in a higher, in a higher, higher realm while I just had to really pause for a moment because it was sort of like a bit just came into my consciousness, let's say that. While everyone else came down, you could say I stayed up. And I was maintaining 
the vibration and how we can store those vibrations of higher consciousness which you do not need a drug to access it's fully there but once you taste it you could say you could replicate it okay it's like if you if you can just hear if, you're, if you want to play a song, you, you could have like the slightest vibration coming out of a headphone and then you could take your guitar and you could just amplify it to the world. You just need to remember the song. That's all. And anyone can show you. You can show yourself. But then you can, it's your choice to play and keep playing it. And well, I just figured out how to do it with geometry. There's so many ways you can go about it in terms of remembering that song. And, holding on to it and I don't want to use holding on to it in the negative sense but uh, but remembering it uh, with a level of grace and, and respect and acceptance and all these terms we use to describe these higher levels of conscious thinking and that There is magic in this story, and at the center of it is mind over matter, perception and observation, and actualization and participation, and how these polarities work with each other to give you the now, to give you this present. And so, the thing is, the next day, after I had fallen asleep and I passed out really hard, <laughs> um, we all realized it was 3 a.m. and all of a sudden I was like one. A lot of time felt like it was lost. It's beautiful. <laughs> and uh, when I woke up the next day and then went to work, um, and, uh, and then went out on a break. I tuned into my necklace and wondered if it, uh, if that vibration was still there and it was still there, but it was subtle. It was really subtle. And that, like, the, the resonation of the coral had, had, had lost most of its timber and it was just, just ever so, so there. But what you need is a crystal to program it, to hold that program, that intelligence. Water is a liquid crystal, and we are, we are mostly water. And so, understanding this idea, is that your intent can bring back to life. Your free will to choose to bring it back to life can. It's the idea of playing the instrument, picking up the in instrument. But this is understanding the simple nature of physics and geometry and just perceiving how this geometry distorts and interacts with the environment around it how the environment interacts with the environment is something that we really need to consider from the singular and the whole as one and none to me to really further our understanding of science is a, a true understanding of Taoist thought and the beauty of the paradox and understanding the infinite and finite nature um, and how it ceases to exist and does exist and that language can't fully convey it and really it's sometimes just left a metaphor or story personal experience be it shared or be it through your own and so I was able to bring back to life that vibration that consciousness. I could feel it stir. And it really only took a moment for me to stir it so much that my friend who had participated in the fire with me that night immediately picked up what I was doing and could feel that higher. He felt the exact same thing I felt. And so when we do water structuring experiments and you 
water one group of plants next to another group of plants which has the control, both will have the same results. You have to really separate the control far in terms of how the vibration can transmit within, within near fields of structures. In, in physics, the near field is, is something of, of real importance in understanding uh, surface waves and boundary waves and how uh, the near field uh, offers a huge amount of transfer of energy uh, between systems. And so it's something Tesla understood. So the next step is, what happens if you take a crystal and a coil and then you program it with a higher level of consciousness where technology and spirit come together. And so that's a powerful idea if you can take it. If you can, if you can, let's just sit with you for a second. Maybe that's just gonna be, have to be the humor of me sharing it on 420 over smoke and you're just gonna be like yes Gregor aha uh -huh. can't believe you made this video but I did it's happening that's the now and I'm forecasting the story is about to get m a lot more interesting in Earth 1.0 and 2.0 and they're probably going to divide at some point is how I feel and how that happens I don't know but uh, the division might be a reunification but there's there's a tugging effect and one is a tugging effect there's a collapsing effect and there's there's cycles underway big and small and the cycles I'm playing with are not the ones I'm being told to play with I'm creating my own figuring out exactly the cycles I want and so this day is a day I'm choosing to celebrate right now and uh, it's a day of self-reflection for me and to give thanks to Gaia for this gift um, and that uh, one thing I, I will even say I strongly feel I, I won't um, need uh, the use of some of these substances at all and that uh, Clarity of mind is, is, I really felt brought through just clarity of being. Um, um, I'm really looking forward uh, to the, the person with my necklace getting back this week to go on a nice week long fast. And uh, just gotta be juice, juice, and probably tea, and nothing else for a while gotta feel really good and just like letting go of energies like that's just like what's happening right now is we're just purging purging and and staying really grounded and just feeling here on earth <sighs> happy 420 I mean it's it's a day to celebrate in, in modern culture and it, it's funny because this book I'm writing uh, I, I came to a standstill on uh, February 14th, Valentine's Day, and I, I, this piece I've written time and time again, and I haven't finished it, and just can't finish it, and, uh, I think I can finish it now, and today's the day where I felt like, I think I can finish this piece, um, but I really have to start from April 20th, it can't be February 14th, but start about the holidays we create, um, and I don't think I use holidays necessarily, but the, the thought constructs of society that are created versus when we choose to truly create. And this is like the day of hobbits, it almost feels like for me. Like, when, like back home in Maine, this is like hobbits celebrating everywhere. Like right now, there's massive celebration underway in the, the state of Maine. And it's like 5 a.m. there in the morning. Definitely massive celebration going on in the state of Maine. And... Uh, I, I like being from the Shire. It's it's nice to like grow up with like beer loving, uh, smoke loving, uh, folk. There's Maine is definitely like folk, and being here in Oregon, we're in the state of Jefferson, uh, as it's so called, from basically Medford down to south south of Reading. Um, 
or north of Sacramento, as they say, in that uh, we were talking today about like the whole idea of a new Manhattan project, and uh, I was like, you know, what that name should be it should be uh, the Jefferson Project. Uh, it was a beautiful piece of information. You should have heard me like. I think I almost screamed. It was yell. It was like it, like a yippee yell, you know. It was a good one. It was solid. Um, I got a piece of information from Asha of uh, Pacific Films. Um, I love that lady. I went with her. Her and I went to uh, a crop circle uh, workshop tonight in Ashland at the Oasis. Uh, what was his name? He's, he's written, I think, a, at least a book um, on, on crop circles. And uh, um, what was it about Asha? See, the, now, this is why I don't usually make videos high on, on YouTube. I'm dead serious. Uh, your, your, your train of thought just like wanders. I mean, I, I do wander a lot and go on tangents, but it's, it's not professional. And I, I feel like I haven't done this channel for a while, and it's because I, I, the nature of the work I'm getting in, um, uh, I'm, I just might be doing less videos. I don't know. I, I, I want to explore more creative efforts somehow. There is the, the Shakespeare Festival here in the summer, and uh, I talked about uh, doing something with. Uh, like Tesla and Wilhelm Reich and uh, Victor Schauberger and Walter Russell. They have a bunch of us play characters and create like this Greek drama and, and do it at the festival of summer. I thought it would be absolutely wonderful. Uh, I really miss acting and performing. Uh, I haven't done it as much lately. And um, it's getting into this period of my life. I feel like I've definitely been in like an existential crisis lately. And that's where I think that this video channel is like, oh, fuck it. Um, what I think probably the best thing for me to do right now is just like process out loud to the world. It can be completely public and not really give a shit about it and just, just let go. And uh, it's, it's, it's a different world right now. And I'm happy to be a part of it. I'm happy to be vulnerable with my character and... and start really just letting go of uh, the Leo pride aspects at its like deepest core because it's been a long process of letting that go uh, being a, a performer and then and realizing it through performing the the significance and the substance of such energies like that and uh, coming to terms with the shadow and uh, where free will that's all I gotta like have to say is just like free will and that I have like the substance of this whole experience for me uh, and like lots of my metaphysical writings and poetry just con just focus so much and heavily on just the idea of freedom what it means to be free uh, physical spiritual mental emotional however you want to categorize it and uh, the the idea of determinism and free will and, and coming down to this this moment and being in the moment and are you really in this moment and control of the way you want to be in control of this moment because you don't have to be in control of the moment you can completely let go and that's you're controlling yourself to let go you're making the choice to let go and control nothing <coughs> and that's that's just the beauty of it Who knows what tomorrow will bring? That's the craziness of, of, of reality at the simplest context of the now. And that, I don't know. Just being comfortable with, I don't know. There's the thing about science and, and, and knowledge, there's, I, I absolutely swear I've said this before. And so, sorry if it being a repetitive one too many times, but the, the more you realize, the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. Uh, and just don't know that much. And uh, it's nice to have experiences that uh, uh, really help me understand how much I don't know. And that's the context of... of like, I think letting go with science in the simplest sense.
just don't know. But that's really cool, and I understand it, but I don't know. And so, uh, I, I think that's like the key to like perpetual motion. And what I mean perpetual motion is perpetual awe. It's like motion of spirit. It just keeps it going. You're just a locomotive for observation. I'm just in awe of this moment, of this character, of this story, of this plot, of this theme, of this setting. And the beauty and silence and the expansion of sensory information at the same time of its equal and opposite reaction is the silence within your senses and what that brings. Something maybe really grasping, like an example maybe to get this, is how they made this room that was fully padded, uh, or that reduced sound so much you could hear your own internal organs. No one could stay in the room more than 30 minutes because they get really creeped out. And uh, to let go of the background noise that keeps us um, in a, I always have a hard time with this word, Illusory, illusory, illusory mm. So, maybe I can explain that, it's, it's such an interesting thing uh, But the, the auditory processing disorder And maybe this is like, I, I watched this video yesterday on, on Facebook of all places uh, Of this autistic girl And her typing on the computer And uh, how we interpret different things with the brain differently in terms of negatives and uh, um, seeing how my brain misfires and so it's this auditory processing disorder and I, I talk about this in my workshops a little bit in terms of how it influenced me with math and physics and it's sort of like a shield for like English language thought constructs this is some of the thought constructs in English are pretty bad um, and they still permeate me right now definitely and uh, uh, but like that word like that word I can't I can't it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't fire in my brain it just really doesn't fire I, I don't know how else to say that uh, and so there, there's some big words in English that I've just never been able to say and uh, I I with, with language, I almost have to, I usually spell out the word in my head to see the, see the word. And if I can't, <coughs> one usually spell it, it's usually hard uh, for me to say, like initially. So that's why English also helps me out, um, because the way it's, the language is set up in terms of how you pronounce it, um, it makes it easier to figure out. But in terms of like colloquial conversation, uh, I don't necessarily pick that up, and sometimes I make people write things down for like a name and be like, oh, okay, and then like it's it's there, and it's like photographic memory, it's there for life, but I have to like get it through this like slight barrier of communication filter I work with, and so uh, there's uh, misfires in terms of reception of hearing, but part of that has to do with 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 talking, which I don't fully understand. I'm not I'm not really an expert on on the brain or biology for that matter. I'm not a biology guy. And uh, when it's, it's, it's uh, like, maybe someone could explain this to me more. It's, it's a dark shadow when uh, I'm trying to like recall that word and like the, the, the words trying to get through, but it, 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 it never, it never can pierce. Um, and, and so I'm trying to just describe that layer of my consciousness uh, when I'm trying to access that aspect of my, my reality and it's not it's not accessible it's 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 just blank and there's there's a few there's quite a few words actually in English that are just like and I, I can't I can't ever recall them 
Um, and sometimes I've sat with words and tried to recall them for a long time. I remember I was explaining this to uh, someone recently about a friend's name that I've had the hardest time saying. And uh, they'd say their, the, my friend's name correctly to me because it was no problem for them. And I'd say it, and then within like five seconds, I couldn't remember it, I couldn't recall it, it just, it just, it's just a blank. And that's been a, a, a really interesting thing to observe. And so it's also helped me understand sort of the nature of the, the physical world and the metaphysical world. And, and seeing it with this autistic girl and that she's like fully conscious in the metaphysical and that she just has, she's just expressed trying to like interact with this reality and she's saying why she, the whole reason uh, she spasms or like flails around is because she feels like she's on fire most of the time and it's the only way to uh, the, making noise and, and flailing, flailing around is the only way to drone out the, all the sensory information coming in. And it's just really beautiful to hear so her metaphysical intake of her reality, of how her body interacts with reality. <clears throat> and so it's, it's the same for me in that I'm fully aware of my, my, my I wouldn't say fully aware, but I'm, I'm very present and, uh, and, and conscious of, of the nature of my metaphysical being um, and how it communicates to my physical body and that um, I know exact, it's like, it's like when I'm working in my 3D modeling program, I know exactly what I want to do, but the program just won't do it. Same with, same with like, you know, same, same thing with this. I know exactly what I'm thinking, what I want to communicate, how I want to like flow out, um, and uh, I, I fully understand that word. I know how to spell it, even, and, and it's, uh, I, I even know how it sounds. I, I really do. Um, it's not. It, that's what's interesting about this word. And it's that word. That's the metaphor. I think in all of this is that's that, that's the word that's catching me up here. And it's just all an illusion. See, I can say that no problem. It's just that 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 roll of the R that there's it just doesn't doesn't it doesn't fire in my head when I want to say it. And um, feeling that boundary layer and understanding that boundary layer. And so the boundary layer is this fundamental geometrical construct uh, that is of m huge metaphysical signi significance for understanding. And perceiving that, that misfire, I can really see something unique in my boundary layer. And uh, it's something I haven't fully con conceptualized in words, but it's a filter on my reality. It makes it different. But, so one interesting thing is of all my relationships in life, um, even the one I'm in now, uh, everyone has had glasses, every single one of them, glasses or contacts. And uh, I mean, I'm, same with my parents. I, so many people I know have glasses and contacts. And uh, it was a, it's always an interesting thing um, because I have, I have better than 20-20 vision. I can't remember what it's called. It's 20-40. I don't know. Um, and it was, it's better than it used to. It's, it's not as good as, it, good as it was when I was like 14. Um, but uh, extremely acute, detailed vision. And it's just, and for me, it's normal. It's just really normal. Um, and so reading things really far away um, catches people off guard. Or I think they can read it. And I'm like acting on that information because I'm taking that information in, but I'm realizing they don't have that information at all. And so, uh, it, our body filters are such an interesting aspect to understanding some, you could say, the fundamental natures of our, our reflections and, and seeing all these patterns coming back into the now of the story and the illusion in this story and, and coming to our, our truth is going to degrade that illusion of the story and bring the truth into the story. Because it's your truth. You're the writer. You're the creator. That's that's the God-given truth. And so you just need to like grab a hold of that. And so I got my computer right in front of me. Uh, what was this lovely quote which I've read before? But 
someone posted it on the infamous infamous Facebook. Um, <coughs> you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. Buckminster Fuller. And so someone posted this after I, I, I had the Earth 1.0 and 2.0, and it's it's not changing Earth 1.0. It's there's it's Earth 2.0, uh, and it's it's highly upgraded. It's much more conscious and compassionate. Uh, it is uh, internally and externally aware, um, with uh, a, a notion of the center in between. Um, as this fundamental point of perception and being and infinite source and grace and love. And, uh, and Guy is back in town. Well, at least she's always been in here, but now she's an um, active part of our living process. And so, uh, it's very cozy. Fear is uh, minimal and very natural and healthy fear when it does arise. Uh, and, um, yeah, it tastes like never-ending lavender. I think that's a good way to put it. At least that's, that's how I would like to say it. Those, those things that remind you of, uh, being human. I think that's the big thing with the 2.0 is uh, embracing being human and knowing the unique experience of having this life on earth. Happy 420. I end it with that. Love you all. Beautiful, beautiful people. Beautiful world. Beautiful moment. Smiles, lots of smiles. Namaste. Blessings.